Hello and welcome to worship on this Transfiguration Sunday. Typically, we focus on the text in which Jesus is unveiled of his divinity uh, in front of his disciples. But instead, today, we're going to focus on the Old Testament reading in which Elisha goes on a journey. That's why we are doing this in the car. I promise that I'm not going to be driving whenever I'm recording. Uh, however, this will be a time in which we can go ahead and observe what it's like to be traveling along with Elijah, Elijah and Elisha as they go on their last journey together before Elijah is brought up to heaven, which we will actually hear in this story today. So uh, further announcements, if you are in the Hartford City area, I will be at Zion from 1 to 3 today to uh, offer up ashes for Ash Wednesday, which will be on February 17th. And speaking on that, at 7.30 for Lent, we will have midweek services starting with Ash Wednesday, this coming up Wednesday. Uh, and those services will be posted on our YouTube page with links going to our Facebook page at 7.30 every Wednesday. So please come and join us as we go through a Lenten reflection on focused on healing this year. And seeing that healing is not just healing from injury or sickness, but healing is needed in many aspects of our life. And so, let us prepare our hearts and minds for worship. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we are in captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us, and for his sake God forgives us all our sins. As the called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Kyrie is number 152 in the ELW. Thank you. 
Let us pray. Almighty God, the resplendent light of your truth shines from the mountaintop into our hearts. Transfigure us, your beloved Son, transfigure us by your beloved Son and illumine the world with your image. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from 2 Kings. Now, when the Lord was about to take Elijah up to heaven by a whirlwind, Elijah and Elisha were on their way to Gilgal. Elijah said to Elisha, Stay here, for the Lord has sent me as far as Bethel. But Elisha said, As the Lord lives and as you yourself live, I will not leave you. So they went down to Bethel. The company of the prophets who were in Bethel came out to Elisha and said to him, Do you know that today the Lord will take your master away from you? And he said, Yes, I know. Keep silent. Elijah said to him, Elisha, come here, for the Lord has sent me to Jericho. But he said, as the Lord lives and as you yourself live, I will not leave you. So they came to Jericho. The company of the prophets who were at Jericho drew, on, drew near to Elisha and said to him, do you know that today the Lord will take your master away from you? And he answered, yes, I know. Be silent. Then Elijah said to him, stay here, for the Lord has sent me to the Jordan. But he said, as the Lord lives and as you yourself live, I will not leave you. So the two of them went on. Fifty of men of the company of the prophets also went and stood at some distance from them, as they both were standing by the Jordan. Then Elijah took his mantle and rolled it up and struck the water. The water was parted to one side and to the other, until the two of them crossed on dry ground. When they had crossed, Elijah said to Elisha, Tell me what I may do for you before I am taken from you. Elisha said, Please let me inherit a double share of your spirit. He responded, You have asked a hard thing, yet if you see me as I am taken from you, it will be granted you. If not, it will not. As they continued walking and talking, a chariot of fire and horses of fire separated the two of them, and Elisha ascended in the whirlwind into heaven. Elisha kept watching and crying out, Father, Father, the chariots of Israel and its horsemen. But when he could no longer see him, he grasped his own clothes and tore them in two pieces. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Our psalm is Psalm 50. The Mighty One, God the Lord, has spoken, calling the earth from the rising of the sun to its setting. Out of Zion, perfect in its beauty, God shines forth in glory. Our God will come and not, will not keep silence, with a consuming flame before and around about a raging storm. God calls the heavens and the earth from above to witness the judgment of the people. Gather before me, my loyal followers, those who have made a covenant with me and sealed it with sacrifice. The heavens declare the rightness of God's cause, for it is God who is judge. Our second reading, reading is from 2 Corinthians. Even if our gospel is veiled, it is veiled to those who are perishing. In their case, the God of this world has blinded the minds of the unbelievers to keep them from seeing the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ, who is the image of God. For we do not proclaim ourselves, we proclaim ourselves Jesus Christ as Lord and ourselves as our slaves for Jesus' sake. For it is the God who said, let light shine out of darkness, who has shown in our hearts to give light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. Word of God, word of life, thanks be to God. Let us prepare our hearts and minds with song for the hearing of the gospel lesson. The Gospel Acclamation is ELW number 172. Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. Six days later, Jesus took with him Peter and James and John and led them up on a high mountain apart by themselves. 
and he was transfigured before them, and his clothes became dazzling white, such as no one on earth could bleach them. And they appeared to them, Elijah with Moses, who were walking with Jesus. Then Peter said to Jesus, Rabbi, it is good for us to be here. Let us make three dwelling dwellings, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. He did not know what to say, for they were terrified. Then a cloud overshadowed them, and from the cloud there came a voice. This is my son, the beloved. Listen to him. Suddenly, when they looked around, they saw no one with them anymore, but only Jesus. As they were coming down the mountain, he ordered them to tell no one about what they had seen until the Son of Man had risen from the dead. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. We live in a time in which we are waiting, which is interesting given the fact that we're coming up to Lent which does have some themes of waiting, not as much as Advent, but we do sit and await the wait for a time in which the pain and suffering of this world comes to an end. And we seek that forgiveness, which brings us uh, not just comfort, but freedom from the powers of sin and death itself. And while Lent has this experience of repentance, it takes us a moment of realizing the depth and power of that sin. And Transfiguration Sunday often has aspects of light that shine out in the midst of the darkness. Not necessarily to say the darkness is bad, but to unveil what is there and what we cannot see. Elisha knew that Elijah's time was coming to an end. And he had spent all this time with Elijah, learning from him and waiting to become the next great prophet. And so Elisha was taking advantage of every moment that he could, telling Elijah, I am with you until, they, until you are taken from me. And even asking at the end for a double portion of his spirit in order to be able to feel some sort of comfort or strength or guidance in this harrowing experience of being a prophet. Now, as this text continues to go on, as this text continues to go on and Elijah is taken up into heaven, we see the anguish that Elisha has at this experience that in his waiting, he comes to realize that now it is his turn. Now it is his time. And we're not quite sure if that double portion ever got to him. But what we see is just a struggle of an ongoing experience of what it means to be that prophet because Elisha had a clear idea that this was not going to be an easy life and as he finds out later on he is not it is not an easy life it takes a depth of patience that many of us could never ever have and in the same way we are called to look to Elisha with this who had the same patience and desire to seek out that double portion the desire to find peace in the midst of this world. We are living in a time of waiting and coming up to Lent, we are going to be continuing to wait as we wait for a moment when we can go into in-person worship and then eventually go to in-person worship services where we don't have to have any type of safety precautions beyond the usual. The thing is, is that we're almost there. And yes, I'm saying this at the beginning of Lent, but the fact is, is like, is that it is a marathon. Our world has become the epitome of what it means to run a marathon. We are very close to the end of this pandemic. We are very close to the end of time in which we are stuck at home, that we are trying to figure out what this means and that we could actually go back to doing practices without having to do the extra th thought process that goes behind it, whether it's worrying about our friends, our family, or worrying about ourselves as we go out into this world. And the thing is, is that this Lent is going to be a big point of change. And so we are called to seek out any way that we can gain wisdom. And so as we enter into this time, let us seek enlightenment. Let us seek a double portion of what this experience has taught us. And this is not to say that we won't be happy when it's, when this whole pandemic is over. But the fact is, is that every experience that we have, every opportunity, we should take it as a moment in which we can learn and grow in our faith. And so as we finish this time of Lent, as we finish well, not finish this time of Lent, but finish this time of Epiphany or Sundays after Epiphany, finish this time 
in this pandemic. We are called by Jesus Christ to grow in our faith, to find out what is it true, what it truly means to be the people of God. And while pan the pandemic should not have encouraged us to do this, it is now that we have a few more moments, a few more moments where we're going to be stuck at home, where we're going to be bored, where we're not going to have any of the other usual comforts of the world around us. So let us take these moments to continue to learn, to continue to grow, to continue to seek that guidance, to see what it is that when this is over, what is it that Jesus Christ wants us to do? What is it that Jesus wants us to do when we go out into this world freed from the restrictions of the pandemic and now able to do things that we had only dreamed about for the, over this past year? We, are, we have to be cautious, though, because when we get to a point of that liberation, Eventually, we will calm down and start to fall into normal routines. But the thing is, is that we still need to take the wisdom that we gained from this, from this time and apply it in ways that better the world and better the church so that we can continue to be proclaimers of the good news of Christ. What does it mean to proclaim good news in a time in which we have just left annoying, boring times? That is going to be a question that everyone should ask as we go through Lent, as we go through the last moments of this whole pandemic. And so, as you enter into Lent, we will be talking about healing. And some of that healing will be this healing from sickness, this healing from social isolation, this healing and moving on into a world in which there will be some familiar aspects to it. There will be moments in which we will go back to traveling. We will go back to normal interactions. We will go back to potlucks or whatever that means. But we are called to also be reflective on how those things continue the mission of Jesus Christ. So let us think about it. Let us think about, first of all, what healing we need. And then second of all, how do we apply what we have learned or what we have grown over this time into a world in which we will not have any of these other restrictions, but instead can celebrate together, eat together, and be in person the body of Christ. This is hymn number 715 in the ELW. i 
Guided by Christ, made known to the nations, let us offer our prayers to the church, the world, and all people in need. For the gospel proclaimed in word and deed, for communities of far faith far and near, and for all who show the face of Christ throughout the world, let us pray, have mercy, O God. For creation, sun, moon, and stars, life forming the dark earth and oceans deep, mountains, clouds, and storms, and creatures seen and unseen. And for the Holy Spirit's guidance and our stewardship of God's creation, let us pray, have mercy, O God. For those responsible for safety and protection, for emergency responders and security guards, attorneys and advocates, civil servants and leaders of governments, that they may witness to mercy and justice throughout the world, let us pray, have mercy, O God. For all who suffer this day, especially Rita, Carolyn, Linda, Nancy, Carolyn, John, Sue, Rebecca, Max, Yolanda, Bill, Glenda, Betty, Joanne, Jeff, Iris, Linda, the family of Rita Bell Nottingham, and those we lift up to you now silently or aloud. That Christ, our healer, transform sickness into health, loneliness into companionship, bereavement into consolation, and suffering into peace. Let us pray. Have mercy, O God. For companions on life's journey in this worshiping community, for loved ones who cannot be with us this day, and for guidance during struggles we face, that God's glory is revealed around and among us. Let us pray. Have mercy, O God. For all military personnel, especially Tyler, Zach, Peyton, and Dakota, and for leaders of governments that they provide protection to all people, especially the most vulnerable. Let us pray. Have mercy, O God. In thanksgiving for the faithful departed who now rest in their earthly pilgrimage, especially Rita Bell Nottingham, that their lives of service and prayer inspire us in our living. Let us pray. Have mercy, O God. Merciful God, hear the prayers of your people spoken or silent for the sake of one who dwells among us, your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. And the peace of Christ be with you always. I invite you to pause the video and share signs of God's peace with one another. Let us pray. Praise and thanks to you, holy God, for by your word you made all things. You spoke light into darkness, called forth beauty from chaos, and brought life into being. For your word of life, O oh God, we give you thanks and praise. By your word, you called your people Israel to all your wonderful gifts, freedom from captivity, water on the desert journey, a pathway home from exile, wisdom for life with you. For your word of life, O oh God, we give you thanks and praise. Through Jesus, your word made flesh, you speak to us and call us to witness. Forgive through the cross, light to those entombed by death and the way of your self-giving love. For your word of life, O oh God, we give you thanks and praise. Send your spirit of truth, O oh God, to rekindle your gifts within us. Renew our faith, increase our hope, and deepen our love for the sake of the world in need. And Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. 
Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And now may your light so shine before others that God, that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. Go in peace, celebrating the great news of Jesus Christ. The sending hymn is in the ELW at number 536.